So one of the approaches for eliminating false dependencies is to duplicate register values. Let's see how that would work. We have an instruction here that adds R2 and R3 and puts the result in R1. Then we have R1 minus R5 goes into R4. Then we have R4 plus 1 goes into R3. Then we have R8 minus R9 goes into R4. And sometime later, we have an instruction that uses R4. Here we have what happens in some cycle. Let's call it cycle 100 and in the next few cycles. And let's assume that cycle 100 is when this instruction can execute. Now what happens is after we execute this instruction, it can supply the register value R1 through forwarding to the next instruction. So we have that this instruction can execute here. And then R4 can be supplied to the next instruction so it can execute here. However, this instruction, which is doing R8 minus R9, could actually execute here. So the problem with false dependencies occurs in that R4 is written by this and also this instruction. So let's see which final value of R4 ends up in the register so that it is used much later here. Well, if this is in execution stage, let's say that we have the memory stage next and the write register stage next. Meanwhile, this instruction goes through the mem stage here and then write register here. So as you can see, we first write this R4 and only then write this R4, which means that the final value of register R4, and that is the value that will be read by this instruction, is actually going to come from this instruction, and that should not be happening. So in order to fix this, one way is to, again, duplicate register values. So the idea is that when this instruction writes to the register R4, it writes to a version of register R4, and then another value is stored to another version of R4, but we remember both versions. So that's why it's called duplication. Pretty much, we don't store only one value for R4. We store all the possible values that R4 had. And then an instruction that wants R4 will have to search among all the possible versions of R4 to find the one that is before it, but the latest one before it. So in this case, we will search for R4 and find this one and this one, and this is the latest one that we should be using. That requires two versions of R4 to exist. Meanwhile, this instruction here, when it executes, will look for versions of R4 and again find that there are really two versions that it might be using, R4 here and R4 here, but because this one is coming after this instruction, it should be ignored, and thus we use this value. So everything will be correct, but it requires us to keep multiple versions of each registers, which is really complicated.